Okay, at this point we've gotten fairly comfortable with talking about the derivative. We understand the notation, dy dx, derivative of y with respect to x. We understand the definition, the limit of the difference quotient. We understand that the derivative measures change. And we know the derivative tells us what the slope of a tangent line is. So we're not going to forget any of that. None of that's being undone by our discussion today. However, today we're going to look at things from a little bit different perspective. We're going to look at differentials. And differentials are going to prove to be powerful tools to solve particular types of problems. Now, let's uh, start off by uh, defining the differentials with, by way of looking at a graph. And Let's suppose we have this differentiable function, and I'm going to draw a secant line passing through the points f of x and f of x plus delta x, so that we have this situation where we have horizontally we have the change in x, which is x plus delta x minus x, of course is delta x, and the change in y's, which is y plus delta y minus y. And just making some observations here. Notice that another way to look at delta y would be f of x plus delta x, which is this point, minus f of x. That is delta y. Just using a different notation than one I have over here. But that is delta y. Now, that being the case, delta y over delta x is this. Now remember, this is the formula that we use to calculate the average rate of change between two points, x plus delta x and x. Okay. Well, it's almost the derivative. Remember, to find the then to turn this into a, a, the definition of a derivative, we simply take the limit and let delta x go to zero. So this right here is the definition of a derivative. So we have this. We have that as delta x goes to zero, dy over, I mean delta y over delta x is the derivative. Okay. Now, that being the case, what if delta x does not go to zero? What if it's just very close to zero? Well, we don't have the derivative but we have approximately the derivative. So we're going to re recognize this fact that as delta x gets closer and closer to zero but doesn't get to zero, we get a better and better approximation of the derivative at x. Now, that being the case, you can see clearly that if you multiply both sides by delta x, you get an approximation for delta y. It's f prime of x times delta x. Okay, so that's really nothing new. It's just some observations that we're making. Now, we want to talk about differentials. Now notice, we have delta y here and delta x here. Now, what I'm going to do is draw a tangent line. This is the derivative. And I'm going to make a little triangle using the tangent line, part of the tangent line, as the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So notice, from x to x plus delta x, I have one side of the triangle. And then, beginning right here, going up to the tangent line, I have the other side of the triangle. And I'm going to call that length there delta y. This length down here, delta x. So this is the change in y, and this is the change in x. Now don't get the, these confused. This larger distance here is delta y, the smaller is dy. Delta x and dx are the same. They're the same length. But what delta y is, is the change in this y and this y. The difference, this y minus this y. So it's that length. Now you notice that if we take the change in y over the change in x, that will be the slope of this tangent line. 
which is the derivative. So we could say this, that dy over dx is f prime of x. And it, of course, immediately follows from that, that dy equals f prime of x dx. Okay, now notice dy equals f prime of x dx. So dy is dependent upon us knowing f prime of x and dx. However, notice dx. dx can be arbitrarily set. In other words, if I choose dx, I'll just choose how long this needs to be, I can then calculate dy by plugging in here. If I know f prime of x, and dx, I can then calculate dy. Okay, now we're ready to define differentials. For a function, y equals f of x, whose derivative exists, the differential of x written as dx is an arbitrary real number. So we discussed that. I can set dx as I choose. The differential of y written dy is the product of f prime of x and dx, or dy equals f prime of x dx. So here we have differentials defined, the dx and the dy, the differential of x and the differential of y. Now, let's look at how these can be used. Find dy for this function, y equals x squared minus 3x at x equals 5 with dx equals 0.01. Okay, so first of all, we have f prime of x equals 2x minus 3. Just taking the derivative here. Very simple derivative problem. Okay, now, dy is equal to 2x minus 3 dx. And of course, uh, I'm going to need to plug in the value for x and the value for dx. Okay, so we've got... 5 goes in the x, 0 0.01 goes in the y, gives us a 0 0.07. So what we've done is we found the differential of y. We were given the differential of x, we were given x, and now we were able to find the differential of y. Okay, now... Let's look at linear approximation. This is something fun that we can do with what we've learned. Let's suppose that we want, well, first of all, remember this, that uh, we established this, that f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x is approximately the derivative. Okay. In other words, when we don't let delta x go to zero, but it's close to zero, we know that's approximately the derivative. Now, doing a little algebra, multiplying both sides by delta x, and then adding the f of x, we get this formula. So we're not really using differentials here, uh, the differential notation, but we're just utilizing something that we observed at the beginning. Okay. Now, let's see how this will work. We want to approximate the square root of 26. Okay. And I want to use that formula that, that we looked at on the previous slide. So we want to utilize this. f of x plus delta x is approximately f prime of x delta x plus f of x. Now, we're wanting to approximate the square root of 26. Well, and we're wanting to do this without, of course, a calculator. Obviously, the function that we're dealing with here is the square root function, since this is the square root of 26. Now, the derivative of the square root function is 1 over 2 square roots of x, because this is x to the one-half, using the power rule as one-half x to the negative one-half. And, of course, that gives you one over two square roots of x. Okay, now, here's the thing. 
since 25 is close to 26, and we know the square root of 25, we will use this. x plus delta x is 25 plus 1. In other words, we're going, since we're trying to approximate 26, and we don't know what it is, we know what the square root of 25 is. It's 5. So I'm going to pick this number, which is close to 26, to help me get an approximation. We'll see how it works. Now notice, here's what we have. We have 25 plus 1, where x, I'm using 25 as my x, and delta x is 1. Now that adds up to 26. So we're saying this, that the square root of 26 is approximately, notice this is the function, f of x is equal to the square root of x. So f of 26 is approximately. Now, I need to put in the derivative. 1 over 2 times the square root of 25. And now delta x, which is 1. And then the square root of 25. Now, this is pretty interesting stuff. Notice we are about to approximate the square root of 26 without a calculator. It's called linear approximation. And it goes hand in hand with our discussion of differentials. So look at this. The, uh, the square root of 26 is approximately this. All we have to do is crunch the numbers. Okay? Now notice, this is 1 tenth, corresponds to this. Of course, this is 1. And then, of course, this is 5. So 5 plus 0.1 is 5.1. So there is the approximation of the square root of 26. Notice we didn't even use a calculator. Now these are the types of problems that we're going to tackle in, in this section. Lots of problems you can use, you can solve with techniques like this and as you saw with the other problem, using differentials.